This episode of The Modern Rogue brought to you by our friends over at Audible. Head on over to audible.com slash rogue. Sign up for your free 30-day trial and get a free book. That's R-O-G-U-E. So when you see a wrapped bar like this, do you think Dexter or Grandma's house? Dexter. Really? Yeah. Well, my grandmother was also a serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> I had a lot of... Uh, Pie <laughs> growing up. Yeah, Mince meat pie. Mince meat pie, <laughs> yeah. The modern bro finally learns how to eat drinks. All right, we are back at the secret undisclosed location in Austin, Texas with Trevor. How you doing? Yeah, Trevor, man. we missed you, sir. Yeah, not as much as the fans did. Oh, fans I know. Uh, barbarians at the gates. Yes. I got a couple of personal messages. I just want to let everyone know we are fine. <laughs> Everything is okay. <laughs> I had to post a couple of uh, Instagram photos every now and then when we were hanging out. It's like I'm sending pictures to the people who I'm, I'm ransoming their family. It's like, <laughs> he's safe, look. <laughs> All right, now I heard a rumor when I walked in and you told me the rumor <laughs> that we're gonna do jello shots yes we are going to do jello shots but not just any jello shot we are going to do an old fashioned jello shot see when you told me that i thought oh an old-fashioned jello shot so it's got everclear in it and it's jello no you mean an old-fashioned in a jello shot form. it's not throwback thursday it's an old-fashioned <laughs> jello shot okay. okay one thing that i learned in researching this episode about jello shots was that uh, the satirist uh, tom laren actually takes credit for creating the jello shot from the 1950s when he was working for the nsa they couldn't have alcohol on base and so this was his little workaround what uh, don't know if that's true or not. Other alcoholic gelatin drinks date back to like 1862. Wow. Uh, called punch jelly. I the like origins, punch jelly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The origins are apocryphal. But this one is a special mix. Is this something you came up with? No, I cannot take credit for this. Is actually, I cannot even disclose who came up with this. It is a, we will say, an acquaintance uh, in uh, Houston, Texas. We made the old fashioned as one of our first drinks long ago. But this time we're going to put it into a jello shot. So. Mm -hmm. Tell us how we do it. It does make quite a mess. That's why we're saran wrapping. It does have an ango stir of bitters, simple syrup in it. You get that on anything, it's gonna stain it. We're looking at equal parts water, equal parts syrup, equal parts whiskey. That sounds easy. I yeah. could do that. I could do all that. And I assume some uh, non-name brand gelatin. Yeah, yeah. So all you're gonna need is a burner. We have basically one that you find oh, when you go camping. Oh, that's wild. I was just like, you're not camping, we're at a bar. And I right. was like, bars don't have grills. You know, it just takes one butane cartridge. You just hook it up, make sure it's good to go, and uh, lock it in. Then any stainless steel pot, I would not suggest using uh, anything. Plastic. Well, plastic doesn't really work well with fire, <laughs> so yeah. I know. Yeah. But we did an episode <laughs> about that. <laughs> <laughs> I do not suggest using a nonstick <laughs> pan. Don't use a wooden pot on those burners. I'm telling you, it's a safety problem. <laughs> they, they go right up. <laughs> wooden they go right up. Nobody tells you that. It's, it's not on. The, there's no label or anything. I wouldn't suggest using a nonstick pan for this. I would use just a stainless steel pot. Cheaper the better. It tends to stain it a little bit unless you really want to scrub it afterwards. This one we primarily use just for these jello shots. What kind of quantities uh, should you aim to make? What we're going to be doing is going off of two thirds cup. So if you do two thirds cup water, two thirds cup simple, and boil that, you will then add two thirds cups whiskey afterwards because you don't obviously don't want to boil the whiskey with it because because otherwise all the alcohol, the alcohol will go yeah. out of it. Oh sure. And then the ratio on the jello is just simply one pack for every ten and the two thirds, two thirds, two thirds makes about 10. Great, oh, well let's get started. Okay, first measure out the water and we're gonna aim to make about 20 jello shots today because I have to open the bar a couple times this week so I wanna get ahead. Sure, so four thirds? Uh, well, two thirds plus two thirds is one and one third. Also four thirds. Thank you. Math. <laughs> Next, we're gonna be using our uh, bitters simple syrup. Now, all it is is Angostura bitters and simple syrup, which is water and sugar. The ratio on this is a half cup of Angostura bitters, just straight out of the bottle here. Right. Uh, with one cup water to one and a half cups of sugar. It's ultra sweet, because it, I mean, Ango by itself is that bitter, mm -hmm. so you really need to add that much sugar and water to really even it out so that the Jell-O shot doesn't taste you know, all bitter. 
Got it. I've nicknamed our Angostura bitters the GOP simple because they're very bitter. We're That's just, a lot. Yeah, just one and one third, just like the water. Four thirds. Four thirds. <laughs> And you do want to be careful, Ango, it will stain everything it touches. We've dealt with Ango a lot in our various episodes, and this is the first time you've warned us about the Ango safety hazard. <laughs> I don't want to look like I've got a port stain on my face or something. <laughs> or stain my face. Your, you, you get the, the juice of Safu lips uh, <laughs> yeah. from Dune. You, you look like a Mentat. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're going to add in uh, two Jello packs since we're making 20. Like I said, it's about one pack per 10 jello shots. Now, you want to- You don't have to bring it to a boil first, you can just throw no, it straight no, in. No, no, you just want to let it sit in because you want it to really get in there. Once it hits all that sugar, it'll tend to clump up. Got so it. So you want to mix this in. Now, you want to whisk this, but not too hard because you'll put a lot of air in it and you'll have bubbly looking jello. Like yeah. you can remember dishes where there were a lot of bubbles on the corner. Um, that's actually something, when I make the fake tongues that I use on my stage show, I use a hard bloom gelatin, and that's like the bane, is if you get that frothy stuff, because it hardens with those bubbles in there. I prefer to use like a, a smaller whisk. So just kind of get in there and just look at it. As long as you don't see any chunks, you're good, and it doesn't take much to get it in there. You haven't even turned the heat on yet though, right? No, not at all. Now the cook time can vary and it's gonna depend on your burner, whether you're on a gas stove or whether you're on electric. It's about five minutes for every 10 shots. Uh, when we first started doing these, we tended to overcook them. They turned out okay, but they were kind of hard to chew and it would, they were a little bit more solid than you want. It was like a now and later. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Laffy Taffy. <laughs> and we realized one, we were putting in just a little bit too much of the Jello packets. Yeah. And two, we were cooking it for just a little too long. We're doing 20, so here's what I suggest. Five minutes for the first 10, one minute for every 10 after that. Since we're doing 20, we're gonna do five minutes and one, so six minutes. Okay. Perfect. Always keep this uncovered on medium heat. Uncovered medium heat. Yep. You got it. Good luck, guys. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, uh, we open at four. Uh, yeah, right. the, uh, the tip jar's over here. <laughs> Enjoy. All right, moments like this where you're literally waiting for a pot to boil, that's what Audible was made for. Think about your commute. Times that were drudgery become moments that you could go on a high seas adventure. You can learn about the history of the earth. You can read the greatest books from the greatest authors read by the greatest voices all at Audible. I have been a fan and subscriber for half a decade now. I just started the book and a bottle of Rum by Wayne Curtis. It is the story of the discovery of the new world and how booze was at the center of it all. You get these amazing tales. You get to see the new world develop through the eyes of 10 iconic cocktails. I love it. You're going to love it too. Best of all, you can get it totally free by heading on over to audible.com slash rogue. That's audible.com slash R-O-G-U-E or click on the link down below. Sign up for your free 30-day trial and get a free book. Start building your library today. The books are yours to keep forever and if you don't like one, you can swap it out. Super easy. Service is top notch. There's a reason I've been deeply in love with Audible for so long. All right, enough history of booze. Let's get back to the making of booze and then the consuming of it. Meanwhile, at an undisclosed bar in downtown Austin. All right, well, now that it's done, we're just gonna turn our burner off here. And is there anything in particular you're looking for in there? Whether you cook it too long or too little, <laughs> it's really gonna look the same. Okay. The only thing that can happen is, based on the temperature, is more water could have evaporated yeah. than it should. Your jello shot will still turn out right. You just may not have the count that you were looking for. You might aim for 20, got 24. There's other times I got 18 because yeah. I maybe cooked it too long. Oh, or it sure. Or it was a little okay. too high. Or the humidity, you know, there's humidity factors based on where you're cooking it. The one thing I do suggest though is this can become kind of a mess pouring them into those little two ounce cups. I have just another measuring cup with a longer spout to kind of funnel it in. We need to add our whiskey now, which again, it's all equal parts. So we're gonna go one and one. <laughs> one and one third. Four thirds, <laughs> Trevor. No, I'm on team one and one and a third what? now. I've left, I've left you in the dust, sorry. <laughs> oh, it looks like you go in a little. Well, I said one and one third, but this is modern rogue. So we're gonna go a little oh. over. Okay. Today we're using uh, Evan Williams bottled and bonded. This is a hundred proof whiskey. Okay. So this stuff is no joke. Now that it's cooled off a little bit, you can dump this in. No alcohol is gonna cook out of it at this point. Do that. And then I always have an extra container, uh, just anything you can pour it into. So you don't have to stir it or whatever, like it blends almost yeah, instantly. It, yeah, it blends as soon as you put it in there. So we're gonna just pour that in. Looks like an old fashioned. 
Looks like my kind of old fashioned. It's one giant jello shot. Yeah. I'm gonna do this. And like I said, you wanna be careful here because jello in the mix in here will start to solidify once it dries out, essentially. So once it bonds to something, you will start to see little clumps. So that's why another reason I saran wrap. So you immediately have to start pouring it into the little cups. Yeah, you don't wanna to wait too long. You've got a small window, but yeah, you might as well get it done because you want to get them cooled down so you can eat them. Now when it comes to cooling them down, do you put them in the fridge or? You can put them in the freezer or you can put them in the fridge. I feel like the freezer sometimes makes them a little harder than normal. So I like to refrigerate them. It takes about two hours for them to really fully solidify. Now what is this missing from an actual Old Fashioned? If you remember our Old Fashioned episode, Old Fashions typically get a cherry uh, and yeah. a orange swath. So that's the one thing that is missing from here. So once you're done with the pot, you do want to get water in it and a little bit of soap immediately. Otherwise uh, that gelatin will cake on there. Yeah, it's it'll get, get off. it's a sticky mess, so. Uh, so how much booze is in each of one of these shots? Well, if you do the ratios, it's going to be two thirds, two thirds. Two thirds, two -thirds. okay. Which is three two thirds. Okay. okay, okay. <laughs> so one shot? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now mine are a little bit boozier, so we're looking, you know, anywhere from a half ounce to, I try to get closer to an ounce. On this ratio, it doesn't quite work uh, just for let's say cost effective sake. But, sure, sure. Uh, anytime I can try to make a little bit extra, I will. And the great thing about this is it doesn't stop with just an old fashioned. If you use this ratio, you can use a lot of different spirits and a lot of different flavors to make it kind of however you want. But the old fashioned always gets people talking. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so we just gotta wait, what, a couple hours for this to harden? Yeah, so we're gonna throw the lids on them and we're gonna throw them in the cooler behind me. And like I said, it takes about roughly two hours. Yeah, at about, okay. four, at about 41 degrees. Yeah. Choo -choo -choo. And through the magic of time travel, <laughs> here we are. So essentially, this is what you end up with, a jello shot. Before you take that though, he was asking what it was missing. Yeah. I do believe it is missing a garnish. Yeah. And since it's a jello shot, you are gonna need a uh, a, a tic tac. We are a some cherry high and, and class an sons of right cherry here. Cherry and orange. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, do do you have to do the whole thing at once? Can you go? Can you, you, can, you sip? What do you, you sip your Jello shot? What do you? Did you learn nothing at Kappa Alpha Theta? No. Okay. All right. All right. As long as you put your pinky up. Yeah. Let's do it. Now there are different techniques to get all of the jello. It's oh, not coming out. Oh, Brian. I just got a tic tac. All you got was the tic tac? Oh, yeah. Oh, this is worse than shotgunning. <laughs> you got to run your tongue around the inside to uh. dislodge the jello. Don't say that when I'm eating. <laughs> oh. By the That's way, actually the, good. The tic tac was Those bitters go. really pop. Mm -hmm. um, it, it really, uh, I, I've only had maybe a half dozen jello shots in my entire life and they've always felt like, I don't know, medicine. But, yeah. but the bitters gives it a, a weird kind of classiness that I wouldn't have expected. These are the classiest jello shots on the planet. I think they might be. <laughs> okay, so we take our bitters and we mix it with simple syrup and we mix in the uh, gelatin. Along with the water. Along with the water. And uh, that cooks for five minutes for every 10 and then one minute for- Every 10 more. For every 10 more, okay. After we heat it up, then we put in the whiskey and then we let it cool for about two hours. Yeah, that's all it takes. That's uh, super easy. Yeah, and as long as you keep the ratio, I mean, you can make 70, 80, 90, yeah. doesn't matter. But they're oh. not like neon green. Exactly. Those are the classiest jello shots on the planet. Cannot thank you enough, Trevor. Absolutely. Your Thanks, wizardry guys. continues. Appreciate it. We'll see you again in like a year or so. Oh. No, don't, don't, don't do that. <laughs> they're gonna be very, they're gonna riot.